Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video will be on acute calculus cholecystitis. It is defined as the obstruction of the cystic duct by an impacted gallstone leading to the inflammation of the gallbladder. So this is a brief anatomy of the gallbladder and this is the gallbladder, this is the cystic duct and if you look upper here, this is the right hepatic duct and left hepatic duct connecting to form the common hepatic duct. And then a cystic duct from the gallbladder will connect with the common hepatic duct together to form the common bowel duct. So in acute cochleus cholecystitis, there is impaction of the gallstone at the cystic duct or at the neck of the gallbladder and then it will cause inflammation of the gallbladder. When there is obstruction of the biliary flow, the bowel cannot flow out, then the gallbladder will become distended and inflammation will occur. And this is what we call as cholecystitis. The symptoms that the patient might have are constant and severe pain, abdominal pain, especially at the right hypochondrium area. And this is due to inflammation spreading to the parietal peritoneum scapula. And this disease is also associated with anorexia, nausea, and vomiting. The signs that we can look out for on physical examination, we check the vital signs where there will be tachycardia and low-grade fever. Tenderness at the right hypochondrium will be noted together with guarding. Murphy's sign will be positive where it is an inspiratory arrest during deep palpation of the right upper quadrant. Boas sign is the hyperstasia below the right scapula. And in 30% of the cases, the gallbladder may be palpable if it is in a late stage already where the omentum wraps around the gallbladder. And the worst case scenario is empyema of the gallbladder, which is one of the complications of cholecystitis. Mild jaundice may be present. If there is severe jaundice, then we should consider other differential diagnosis instead of cholecystitis. The investigations that we can do, blood investigations, include full blood count to look for leukocytosis, liver function tests where there will be elevated liver enzymes, renal profile to look for dehydration and also serum amylase can be done also to rule out pancreatitis. Imaging investigations such as ultrasound of the hepatobiliary system will show some features of acute cholecystitis such as a thickened gallbladder wall, sonographic Murphy's positive where it means that there is maximum abdominal tenderness from the pressure of the ultrasound probe when placed over the visualized gallbladder. Pericholecystic fluid due to edema of the gallbladder wall, presence of gallstones in the biliary system and also contracted gallbladder if in cases of chronic gallstone disease. CT scan of the abdomen might show a fat stranding around the gallbladder which is not seen on ultrasound. And we can also use CT scan to exclude complications such as empyema or perforation of the gallbladder. For management of cholecystitis cases, when the patient comes into the hospital, first we assess the patient's vital signs, resuscitate the patient if needed with IV fluids, give empirical intravenous antibiotics such as IV ceftriaxone and metronidazole, new by mouth to allow for bowel rest, careful monitoring for signs of failure such as peritonism, septic workup for the patient, analgesia for pain relief. The definitive treatment for cholecystitis would be open or laparoscopic cholecystectomy, which is removal of the gallbladder. And another alternative treatment can be given, which is percutaneous cholecystostomy. This is the percutaneous catheter placement in the gallbladder lumen under imaging guidance. This is for those patients who are not fit for surgery or if early surgery is difficult due to extensive inflammation of the gallbladder. So this percutaneous cholecystostomy will help to drain the gallbladder and relieve the inflammation. And once the acute episode is over, after around 4 to 6 weeks, then we can do an elective cholecystectomy where removal of the gallbladder is done. These are the complications of acute cholecystitis that can occur. First, high drops or mucosal. So when there is cystic duct obstruction, it will lead to a tense gallbladder filled with mucus. 
where we call as hydrops. Empyema is when the gallbladder is filled with pus due to bacterial infection of the stagnant bowel. Gangrene and perforation in late stages of cholecystitis. Cholecystal enteric fistula. So if you see the next slide, this is a picture showing cholecystal enteric fistula where the, there is a fistula form between the gallbladder and the intestine, the bowel, after repeated attacks of cholecystitis. And this condition is usually asymptomatic, where there is no symptoms. On abdominal x-ray, we will be able to see aerobilia, which means there is accumulation of gas in the biliary tree. If there are symptoms, symptomatic fistula should be treated with cholecystectomy and fistula closure. So remove the gallbladder and close the fistula. And another complication is gallstone ileus. So shown in this picture here. This is due to the cholecystal enteric fistula when there is a passage connecting the gallbladder and the bowel. So the gallstone might pass into the enteric lumen. And the most common site of obstruction by the gallstone will be the terminal ileum. So this patient may present with symptoms of small bowel obstruction. And the treatment that we can offer for gallstone ileus is exploratory laparotomy with enterolithotomy. So this procedure is removal of the obstructing gallstone via a small bowel enterotomy proximal to the point of the obstruction. An entire bowel is also searched thoroughly for other gallstones. Cholecystectomy can also be performed in the same operation if the patient is stable and the inflammation is not too severe. So that's all for this video. Thank you.